What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be running through the ultimate optimization guide for CS 2021 and of course 2022 as it's almost time. In this video, you'll learn how to get a ton extra FPS out of your game with basically no snake oil anywhere in it. These are all going to be substantial changes that you'll actually see a difference from. If you'd like extra FPS optimization on top of this, you can check the description down below for the Windows 10 and Windows 11 Ultimate Optimization Guides, as well as an NVIDIA Optimization Guide for both of those operating systems. So with that out of the way, there may be extra links in the description down below that you want to check out if I do ever add anything to this video. Regardless, let's just get into it. So let's start from the very top with some Windows optimization. To start off this video, it's a very good idea to update Windows and of course your graphics card driver if you haven't done so already. It's incredibly basic and I've run through it so many times before, I do trust you know how to do it. You'll find a link to the Nvidia and AMD download websites in the description down below. Open up Steam and it'll be locating CSGO. Right click and hover over Manage, then click Browse Local Files. This will open up the game's directory and it'll be changing some files and settings inside of here. Locate and select csgo.exe, then right click and click Properties to bring up the Properties window. In here, head across to Compatibility and make sure that Disable Full Screen Optimization is checked. Then click Change High DPI Settings and in here, tick this box, select the Application and hit OK, Apply, OK. Then we'll click at the very top to copy this address, Control C, and we'll hit Start and type in GPU to open up graphics settings. Inside of here, we'll make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select a desktop app and then click Browse. In here, we'll click at the very top, paste in the address we just copied and hit Enter. Then locate and double click on csgo.exe and it'll be added to this list. This step is incredibly important if you're on a laptop or notebook as well. Click options under csgo.exe and select high performance, then save. This way it'll always run on the best graphics card available in our computer, which is especially important as mentioned on a laptop, notebook, etc, etc. Of course, if you're using a laptop that hasn't got a switch, i.e. all of the dedicated graphics card information has to go through the integrated graphics card, it's a good idea to try and play games on an external monitor. If you have one available, that'll definitely boost your FPS. Click the back button in the top left, home, and they'll be navigating into the gaming section here. Locate the Xbox Game Bar and turn this off unless you specifically use Xbox Game Bar features. Then head across to Game Mode and make sure that this is on as it'll net us some extra FPS. Now we can close out of the settings window. Before we get into optimizing the game itself, let's quickly finish off with Windows by cleaning up a bit of our hard drive or SSD and making sure there's as little running as possible. Hit Start and type in Cleanup where we'll be opening a disk cleanup as administrator. When this new window pops up, select C drive, the same one with Windows, and hit OK. Then wait for it to run through to completion, and we'll see a whole bunch of files that we can delete from our computer. These are all temporary and not really things you need to worry about. The recycle bin is usually something I leave unchecked if you'd like to go through it and make sure you haven't got anything there you want to restore later, as having this ticked will empty it. The same goes for thumbnails down here, I have this unchecked, as it often takes time to load thousands of thumbnails in folders where I have lots of images. So for me, I leave these two options unchecked. Upon clicking OK and delete files, it'll run through all of these temporary files on our computer, cleaning them up, saving us a couple of megabytes to a couple of gigabytes, maybe even more, depending on the last time that you ran this, if you ever have. It's an incredibly useful tool. Now, it's a very good idea to have as little running on your computer as possible if you want extra FPS. Hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Task Manager, and inside of here, under the Processes tab, you'll be able to sort by CPU, Memory, and GPU to see what's being taken up by what on your computer. The less you have running, the more resources it has available for the game to take, and therefore the higher FPS and stability you can get. You should be running as few programs as possible, especially in a highly competitive Twitch shooter like CSGO. Heading across to the startup tab at the very top, you can sort by status and everything that's listed as enabled here will start up when your computer boots up and you log into it. Of course, disabling these by right clicking and disabling anything you don't want starting up with your computer and isn't exactly necessary, that leaves one viewer program for you to close later on and of course, it'll improve your startup time. So using your actual computer itself, 
will be a lot better after tuning this screen here. If you'd like and you're a power user, heading up to the services section and then clicking open services, we have even more programs and services that start up with Windows itself. We can sort by a startup type and everything listed as automatic starts up when your computer starts up. If you locate something you don't want and don't necessarily need, you can right click properties and then simply change it from startup type automatic to manual. Upon saving it, that program or service will no longer start when your computer logs in and of course is one less thing running in the background, allowing you to save a couple more FPS. With Windows optimization out of the way, let's get into optimizing the actual game itself. To start, let's add some launch options if you haven't already done so. I'll open up Steam, locate Counter-Strike Global Offensive, right click and then click Properties. Inside of here, you'll see launch options at the very bottom. I have a metric ton of launch options in here already, so I'll bring up a notepad on screen so you can see and pick and choose what you want to enter. There are of course some that are recommended, some that are optional and some that are just my preference. So I have a ton of options here. At the very top I have recommended ones, no vid, no joy, frequency and exec auto config. You should absolutely have these as part of your launch options over here. Basically this launch option section is a launch option space followed by another launch option or a launch option space followed by a value rinse and repeat. Novid disables the startup video, or at least in most cases, no joy disables joystick, which you're probably definitely not using, and frequency should be set to the refresh rate of your monitor. It could be 60, 144, 165, etc, etc. Mine's 144, so I'll set it to that. Exec auto config executes an auto config file that we'll be adding there in just a moment. Now in some optimization guides, I've seen using plus sound use HRTF0 to be something that people have set as it boosts FPS or something. I think this might be snake oil, but it's worthwhile you messing around with, though I wouldn't recommend it if you actually use the HRTF audio in game and it's something you're used to and or like. Some other options that you can try and add include hyphen no D3D9X, hyphen refresh, which is similar to frequency, but not the same. Novid we already have included, hyphen high and hyphen threads allows the game to run in high priority mode and use a specific number of threads. As far as I understand, you don't have to include threads because the game will use as many as possible out the gate. FPS max zero allows the game to run with no FPS cap and giving you as much FPS as possible. Though this can really eat at your computer and will mess with OBS recordings and things like that, especially if there's no system resources left for it to eat up. If you notice that you start dropping FPS in recordings, this is something you're gonna to want to lower to your actual refresh rate, i.e. 144 or 60, maybe even double that, just not as high as uncapped, which is zero. Now, the rest of these options here mainly have to do with the downloading files from servers, especially community ones such as max download size, which I've just set to a ludicrous number, and these options here, so they don't really matter, minus frequency, which is repeated again. So with a quick revision, this looks a little bit better. You'll find this in the description down below, as well as this one. These are just optional that I definitely won't include, as they probably aren't going to help with your FPS at all. This is what you'll find in the description down below. So I'll copy that line, simply select everything here, and paste it in as such. Now, because I do play on community servers, I'll paste in those community server options here, and we're basically done. We can close out of this here and actually start by firing up the game itself. Now, of course, I haven't optimized my NVIDIA settings or anything like that. If you'd like, in the description down below, you'll find an NVIDIA and Windows 10 slash 11 optimization guides. Now that we've fired up the actual game itself, let's head into the settings on the left hand side and across to the video tab where we'll start with the video section here. Now, of course, main menu background doesn't matter at all. Color mode should be something you're used to and or your monitor's settings. Brightness is personal preference. The higher, usually the better. But now we're getting into what actually matters. Aspect ratio should match your monitor unless you're one who plays stretched, in which case these settings will go completely out the window, or at least these two here. Resolution should match your monitor, unless you're again someone who plays stretched and you have your own custom resolution. Then display mode should absolutely be full screen as this will give you more FPS. 
Power savings mode should of course be set to disabled unless you're someone who wants to preserve battery and intentionally run on a low frame rate. Scrolling down to advanced video, we get some options here that actually change the game's FPS quite a bit. Everything here by default will be set to auto, which should be plus minus good enough for your graphics card, but we'll be changing these settings. Now, of course, obviously, the lower you set things here, the more FPS you can expect to get. That's pretty much a given. Global shadow quality adds set to low instead of very low, as seeing shadows that are at least somewhat accurate is somewhat important, especially if you're going to be seeing them coming around corners. Model slash texture detail, you can crush down to low without worrying about too much. Hitboxes don't change at all. Texture streaming allows the game to defer high resolution texture loading until later, but this can result in increased memory consumption when this is turned to disabled. If you have a low amount of VRAM, this is something you'll want to enable, otherwise leave this as disabled as loading things while you're playing the game may not be the best for FPS. Affected detail is something that obviously matters with smoke, grenades, etc, etc. The lower that this option is, the better your FPS will be while certain things aren't going on in-game. Shader detail refers to lighting and shading, and this is something that you can usually crush down to low without worrying about too much. Boost player contrast should be enabled, as this allows you to see people better, or at least should do so. I wouldn't disable this as that would intentionally be hindering how you're playing the game unless you actually see better with this disabled, in which case, c'est la vie, choose your own option there. Multi-core rendering should be enabled to get higher FPS. Multi-sampling anti-aliasing mode should be set down to the minimum option, none, unless of course you absolutely hate jagged edges, you may want to set this a bit higher until those vanish. I for one don't mind jagged edges and I'd much prefer a higher FPS. FXAA anti-aliasing, disabled, as this does blur how the game looks when it's enabled. Texture filtering mode can be set to the highest option here, as anisotropic filtering doesn't do anything for FPS on modern graphics cards. You can of course lower this if you want to snake oil your way to higher FPS. Wait for vertical sync should obviously be disabled, as having this on will give you higher input latency. Motion blur off as turning around fast and flick shots will be impossible if you can't see what's going on. You may as well play the game with your eyes closed. Triple monitor mode, obviously disabled, unless you have tripled monitors or you like restricting the UI and HUD to the center of the third display, which I would assume just moves things around slightly. You have to play around with this and see if you want it. I don't think you would set this to disabled. And finally, use Uber Shadows. I actually haven't seen this option before until very recently. Uber Shadows reduces hitching, but may lower performance for some users. It's highly recommended that you leave the setting as auto. Changing the setting while in a server may require reconnecting. So it reduces hitching, but may lower performance. If you're someone who experiences hitching, FPS drops, and micro stuttering, try enabling this. Otherwise, try disabling this as it may give you extra performance. Now we've run through the majority of the settings here. Other than this, there is some extra customization, which we'll do in just a moment with a custom auto exec file, which is why we added that launch option. The audio tab here doesn't have much that'll help with FPS other than maybe positional audio, etc, etc. The game tab won't really have much. Something you may want to adjust is the max acceptable matchmaking ping. As the lower you have this, the closer servers will have to be to you, the better your ping will also have to be in order to actually find the games. This way you won't be playing with Russians if you're living in North America. Other than that, everything else is really up to your discretion. Apply changes and we'll be closing out of the game now. Let's get to adding a custom auto exec. In the description down below, you'll find a download link to the Techno CS2022 optimization pack. Right click and click extract all, extract, and open up the new folder in whatever folder you had this in originally. Opening the folder inside of it, we have config and CS priority. The CS priority folder over here allows you to set the default priority for CS by double clicking on one of these files. If you haven't played around with this just yet, you can change it in task manager by right clicking the game and changing the priority there. Having this on normal is the default, but you can raise it to allocate more system resources before anything else on your computer can take them from it. The config folder over here is what we're really interested in. We have an auto exec file, and inside of these folders here, we have different video options for different specs of PCs. 
There's no real difference between low and recommended. Having low on is probably the best, unless you have an extremely bad PC or want the absolute best FPS, in which case you'll be using the very low folder here. In order to actually use these, we need to navigate into our user data folder and drop these in our CS. So heading back to CSGO's game folder, I'll click all the way back to Steam here, and there should be a user data folder, unless you're like me, install the game on a different drive, you'll need to navigate across to C, Program Files 86, then Steam, and finally user data here. Inside of this folder here, you'll either have one or multiple folders depending on how many accounts you've logged in with. If you have one, great, open it up, and we'll have a whole bunch of folders in here. Otherwise, if you have multiple, things get a little bit confusing, we need to find the correct user ID. Heading across to Steam, I'll head across to my inventory, then trade offers, scroll down and click on who can send me trade offers, then scrolling down further, you'll see here, partner equals, followed by your Steam ID. This is what we're looking for, and this is the folder that we'll be opening. In my case, 104.322.402. Opening this up, here are my game folders. What we need to do is open 730, which is CSGO, and then local CFG, and inside of here, we'll be dropping the files from that downloaded folder. So, autoexec will be copying and pasting into here, and we'll be opening up one of these folders here. I, for one, will be using, say, very low. I'll copy the video file and paste it in here. Double clicking this file and opening it with notepad, you'll notice something at the very top here. Default res and default height. You'll want to adjust these to match your monitor, otherwise the game will launch in a super tiny window. For me, 2560 by 1440 is my display resolution. Yours may be 1920 by 1080, etc, etc. I'll save the file and we can close out of it. The auto exec over here changes a bunch of settings in game that have to do with rendering, etc. The only thing it does add, however, is bind L R clear decals. Whenever you press L, it'll get rid of blood, bullet holes, etc, etc, maybe gaining you a few FPS, especially in busy scenes. That's something you may want to mash once in a while if things are going south FPS wise. We can close out of the folder and we're done. Now, all that's left to do is actually fire up the game and see what kind of a difference it made. Of course, I didn't manage to benchmark my FPS before beginning this, but you'll probably notice very quickly that after you get in game, you'll see a huge improvement in FPS. Let's see where I went. If you haven't used the FPS graph in the bottom right before, this may be new to you. You'll see it rather small down there and it gives you your FPS count, etc, etc. I'm currently netting all the way up to 400, maybe 500 FPS, which is a pretty big improvement as before I was getting 270, 300-ish. Going all the way up to 500, that's practically almost doubled it. Though you are really scraping for the upper limits when you start getting these insane FPS numbers, as getting anything higher really doesn't matter anything. You may even want to slow it down in order to not use too much of your computer. Other than that, the game looks practically exactly the same as it did before, other than maybe shadows and some lighting, but it performs really, really well, allowing you to actually snap around and get things done. But regardless, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. <laughs>